Hi, welcome to the Village of Buchanan, September 24th, uh, 2024 workshop meeting. And I just want to say this evening, we have a very special guest. His name is Jake Adams, and he'll be leading us tonight into the Pledge of Allegiance. So please join me for the pledge. Thank you, Jake. <clears throat> okay, so we have quite a few things to discuss this evening. Um, George, I am going to start with your items. Um, change of order to the paving contract to relocate the storm drain. Okay. Um, good evening, Mayor. Uh, Trip Deans. Good evening, George. Good evening, George. Um, at our last meeting, we were talking about a drainage pipe that was discovered uh, during some repairs to the water valve in front of the um, post office. We found out that there was a pipe that was going from one side of the road to the other side of the road into an adjacent property. We found out that we don't have easements for that property. We don't have a right of way. We don't have anything to go on to the property. The pipe dates back to uh, the, se uh, the 70s, as far back as the 70s, according to our maps. And we reached out to the contractor. We asked him to give us a price to uh, put the pipe instead of to someone's backyard down the street to a catch basin that's in the right of way. And he gave us that price, and you should have that as um, $33,800. Um, it says 12 inch uh, on the on the um, estimate. He said for another $500, it's uh, 15 inch. And I'm not sure what it is to step it up to 18, but we talked about the concern about utilities. So he said he's gonna have to dig up the gas main, uh, the gas services and the water services before he starts. So he knows what can fit in there. So that's that's his starting point for building all this. And he wants to come back. We have some uh, paving that we didn't finish up on next to Seward. We, have, we still have Sunnyside to do up there. That's how you say uh, shed. We still have the shed to do, and we still have Tate to do, and we still have the parking lot to do. So um, that's that's the gist of, of the uh, pipe pulver. So. So you're looking to go from the 13 inch to a larger if there's room to if do there's it. Room, yeah, if there's room, yeah. Uh, it's it's actually 15. We should be able to get. It's uh, Anthony mentioned maybe we should try to get an 18 through there, um, but it's all predicated on mm. on on uh, what we find or what the contract is for. Yeah, he's gonna. I mean, before we give him price or even he can go. I mean, he's gonna do. Uh, he's got to. Locate all that, yeah, and figure out his clearance to his inverts and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, so but this is the price that we're we're looking at. So um, he can mobilize in two weeks. I'm not sure. Well, when's the next uh, board meeting? Is next the, Tuesday. Next Tuesday, October first. So, um, hopefully, we can uh, find that out. Well, we won't find that out until we start digging. So he needs some kind of authorization authorization to start. Um, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Well, I think I, I I think we should. So you need authorization this week or well, for, this week. So if for we, next week, we yeah, for next week's meeting. So if you said tonight, oh yes, let's dig it and figure out, and let's firm up this thirty three to either you know a little bit more. Five hundred dollars was for the one size. For the eighteen, I'm not sure how much bigger that would be, but um, let's dig the test pits and find out where we're at. So okay. that's that's what would be helpful tonight to us to give him that go ahead. I agree. So mm -hmm. and so there's no this is the only alternative, period. Yeah, this this is this is it. Um and the, the pipe that goes into the backs of these yards, it's been there for we we went back and we looked at some of our records yep. and we found out that it's been a problem for a long time. Apparently we reached out to Cook. He said he's been his guy said he's been back there a couple of times. Which I didn't know about. Bob didn't know about. So, no, before, so before his time, so he's he's been up back there to clean it out. And as part of the master plan, 
Um, that back area was meant to be parking. So the idea is buildings in the front, mm-hmm. parking in the back. This would kind of help that situation out a little bit um, by getting that water away from there. It makes that land more usable. So I get it. So well, if you're going to go with parking, so to future use, I recommend an 18 inch pipe then. If your future use is parking back there, like you're talking about. So, so well, the, that part, that pipe going down the street is not going to be connected. So that parking would have its own drainage going down separately. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be connected to it. So it wouldn't be continuous. Okay, I right, forget it then. Forget what I said. I thought it was continuous. If you're talking about parking, like how many spots are you talking about there? So in part of the master plan, they they were talking about like. Instead of in front of Fat Sal's and across the street, they were talking about behind it. And I'm not sure the exact – I think we're talking about similar to what's across, which is like 10 spots or five. So it's not like – it wasn't like a huge okay. amount, but it was – it was why not make all that behind the park, all both those sides of the street. So the back side of White Street to the back side of, of T on that side, all behind there would be – theoretically be parking. But mm-hmm. that's part of a – that was part of the master plan from – 1990. Well, so, just ask him because it, it you know, it, it's the decision between 15 inch pipe and an 18 inch pipe. If it makes sense to do it, do it now. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, not it's, that it's, much. It, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Absolutely. So, so it's just it's how complicated is it going to be? Digging, digging will tell us everything. So, yeah, I'll allow him to do the test bits and then we'll figure it out. From no, there. Then we'll figure it out. So, okay. um, that's where we're at with okay. the pipe. And then the Tate Avenue parking lot. So um, we had a surveyor survey the boundaries. Uh, they're not quite where they were as shown on the tax maps and the aerials. Um, you can show the oh you do you show the plan. So on the on the left is what's existing, and on the right is what we propose. You can now see the boundary line used to be a couple feet away on the right-hand side. Now it's right up against the parking lot. And actually the property line to the building to the left, you can see it's a couple feet off the building. It's really close to the building, where before in the tax maps and the aerials that we had showed it five feet, five or six feet to the right. So this kind of shifts everything to the left a little bit. But the good thing is, the grading on the right to the parcel that was the uh, the billboard company, um, there's no wall. We didn't need any walls on that side. We can meet all the grades on that side. And there's a wall on the more wall on the left side, but it's only four, four and a half feet tall, five feet tall. So that's the good part. Um, we basically the walls all on one side, and we can make that a nice wall, nicer wall. We were talking previously about. Gabion walls and, and and other concrete block that weren't as aesthetically nice, but now that we're facing the residents, probably should have something a little nicer. Because on the backside in the woods, no one's going to see what's in the woods, but what's facing the property, if that ever gets redeveloped, you want it to be a little nicer. So we put a we put the smaller uh, mesa block walls. Um, uh, the, is that what this picture is here, George? Yeah. Is that so, so that's similar to what it would look like. So that's the Mesa block wall. It's an eight inch tall wall, a uh, block. It's uh, 18 inches long, 11 inches back. And we talked about weight. Weight is important. These are smaller block walls. It, it includes some geo grid to go with it. Uh, every third or, four, uh, third or fourth row, you put some geo grid, the wall stands up by itself. Uh, and you, you backfill it with some good material behind it. And then you have the, um, the wood guide rail to uh, protect cars from going over the edge. And this is actually from my town. And you can see the pipe coming out the back. This is actually very similar to how it would look from the property, the, the residential property to the to the left. So it would be that same kind of taper going down. It would gradually get taller mm-hmm. and get Taller as it goes back, and then it would make a turn. So this is pretty much what it would look like. What's the lifespan of that wall? What's the lifespan? Yeah, roughly. Um, I want to say they're a 25-year product. Okay. And they could be longer. They're concrete. so. Mm -hmm. um, That's right on, 25 years. It depends on the manufacturer. Yeah. And the face of it, if it's it's roadside, if it's salt, it eats it right up. Yep. But if it's where it is there, yep. be- yeah, but you got to remember when you're plowing, you're probably going to be putting it 
back, right? So that, yeah, but this rail is going to, and that's why I'm worried about the wood. Yeah, so the the rail that's the rail to the back. So in theory, this if the parking lot's clear, you just plow straight to the back to the woods, and you plow right over the back mm. and to the right. So hopefully, someone would plow everything to the right. So there's an opening in the the guide rail. There should be an opening in the guide rail there, and uh, push everything into the back. That's my concern about the wood. But you can move the guide rail further back towards the wall too, can't you? Uh, Why not? Well, the geo you grid the is there, but... yeah. The, the geo grid is there. So you've got to have a certain setback. It's got to be at least a foot away from the from the from the face of the wall. Yeah, depending on the height of the wall, the geogrid will be set at a different elevation. Right. So. So you're looking to get rid of those boulders after all these years. Huh? All these years, oh. they've been there forever. There's <laughs> oh nice. Oh my god, level. I can't ever remember. Yeah, yeah. So they've been. They've been that'll that'll time. look nice. That'll yeah, really. Okay, I can remember painting those boulders. Oh, okay. Time on okay. So it's been a while. Anybody looking for yellow boulders? <laughs> Give them to your cheek, right? So you can have a pet rock. So the, the contractor gave us uh, a price today to to uh, that should be one of the attachments. Um, I gotta hear my, um, here it is. Okay, so reasonable. It's I can go through the number. But. So the yeah, so we have the uh, the base course, the block wall, the boulder, the top course. Uh, we have a little bit of curb. That's for actually uh, we don't redoing the sidewalk in front there a little bit. So the curb is going to be just like the the island and the back border and the border around. Actually, the right? curb is only the um, the sidewalk in the front there. Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry, the border in the front, the border left and right, and the curb that goes along with the sidewalk. That's in the front. So that's the curb. And then we have this the side, a little bit of sidewalk that's in the front there. It's the seven inch. It's a little thicker because it's a uh, drivable apron. Um, erosion control maintenance, uh, some earthwork, traffic, painting, symbols, the PVC pipe that's in the back, restoration, some saw cutting. He's got to do a little bit of surveying to make sure we stay inside our boundaries and the guide rail. And it totals out to 179, but in the original bid, if you took out what was in the original bid, which was about sixty thousand dollars, it's really about uh, one hundred nine, something like that. It's about one hundred ninety thousand. And that Wait, brings why, our, why are you taking that number out? Uh, because we originally we were just going to mill and pave it, and then as we were talking about, we put it out to bid, and as we were talking about it, we said, "Oh, well, why are we just milling and paving? Why don't we make it better?" Why don't we just do this the right way? Why are we just kind of doing what we're doing? Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, let's let's do it right. So that's why I took the sixty thousand out because that's already in the uh, twenty twenty four numbers. Wow! I see. So that's a high price. That that mm -hmm. curb that curb price is a little high, huh? The curb concrete curb is that eighty two linear foot? Yeah, that was in his original bid, but we only have. We have 135 feet of it. And the yeah. sidewalk prices. So that's, uh, again, we only have a uh, sidewalk. That was in the original bid as well, with $48 a square foot. So that's, yeah, those numbers, usually we see numbers around $60, uh, 60 dollars mm -hmm. 65 And then same thing with the sidewalk, we're in the 35 range. So they're they're about 20 bucks higher each. each but yeah, they're small. They're, they're yeah, small. he's making up ground because they're small. Yeah, because they're small, they're short loads, and um, on eleven thousand it might be nine or or mm -hmm. eight, and then on seven, uh, let's see, on the driveway it's twelve. It's probably again probably about ten. So it's just probably about five thousand dollars. That it's a little bit on the high, but all the other numbers we looked at, they they seem uh, reasonable. So and mm -hmm. he's the contractor that we're we're working with. So and that one thirty. For the binder, yep, that was in the bid. That was in the bid. So that's a good price. Yeah, that is a good price. So he, what he's high on, you're making up for on the ass. Yeah, no, that is a good price. Even the one forty two is is a is a good price. Yeah. So, so when you add the highs and the lows, mm -hmm. he's not bad. He's, you know, it balances out. It balances out. Yeah. So the last time we did this lot was probably what, what Bob? Do you remember? Not in my life. Yeah. Huh? So over 30 years. 
Yeah. So, and not only that, gotta, you know, it's got to be more than that. It's more than thirty. Way, way, probably way over. 30, way, yeah. way more than thirty, George. So, but at least there's some really good upgrades. Yeah, this this will have so doors. hopefully another thirty years, Dan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, least. that's that's why I'm asking. I want this. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully this is the last time we do it for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, we're gonna George, are they, they going to be able to uh, the entrance to that parking lot? It's pretty steep. Got a good hump in there. Is there a way that they're going to take care of that a little bit? Or yeah. So if you notice, you'll well, George addressed that, didn't you? Yeah. So you'll notice that on the um, uh, on the apron. So. The uh, concrete will come in straight and it'll drive, it'll ramp up to the back of the sidewalk and then it'll ramp right down. So it's not it's not as severe as it is it's now. Not as severe as it is now. Right. So, George, on the retaining wall, that's linear foot, 235 a linear foot, or is it square foot at a base of the wall? Uh, square. So, oh, I see a unit price linear foot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, 235. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was the total, what was that? T- what, I, I didn't see it on there, the total length of the wall. Total length is uh, 145. 145. So, I see here, yeah. That's quantity of 145. So, what that does to our overall project, um, with all these change orders, we started out at 419. We added in, um, last time we added in some curbs and some sidewalk in front of the barbershop and at Rockledge. And then we have the change order for the 30,000, which could be a little more if we go with the 18 inch pipe and then you go in with the parking lot. We went from 419 to 601, 970. I think Marcus said we have a budget of 700,000. So we're, I think we're, good. we're still so, in our- What's the final number? 601, 970. Hmm. R- roughly. Um, based on these numbers and the quantities where we're at today. So, you know, but I think Marcus said we're, we're good at 700. I think that was his number last time, so. Yeah, I think we had some money from last year and then what we put in this year. Right. So I think we're, we're okay. All right. Well, what's everybody think? I think? I think we should do it. I mean, we, you know, we have to do the lot anyhow because it's dangerous. It's, it's got some issues to it's, it. But it's bad. Uh, yeah. So I mean, while we're doing it, I called Anthony the other morning because I I wasn't sure if you and he had gotten together and, and you know compared notes. But when there's no when there's no vehicles in there, you drive by in the morning, it's like whoa. Yeah, you see yeah, the right side is really damaged. It's really bad. Yeah, you see the one dip on the one side, and you see the one dip on the handicap side, and it's. And it's, it's yeah, and it's not like it's a lot that's not being used like Lens Cove. This is a lot that's being utilized on a daily basis. Well, it's, the liability of the striping alone, we can't even strike that. No, you can't. It's, so, I mean, we can't even dictate where our handicap spots are or not well, because you can't strike it. There's not even designated spots. I mean, you go to pull in there and go, and, and go into the restaurant because, you know, how many – we've all been there, right? So, mm-hmm. it's it, you, you go to pull in and it's – It'll look beautiful when it's done, striped, and the walls. It'll, it'll, it really will set a. I think it's money well spent. It's you know, it, you, it's where you. It's an entryway into the village. Right. Yep. This is like when we added the parking lot in front of the building. It's yeah. it's gonna just yeah. make that much of a difference. Mm-hmm. All right. So how long will it take? Two weeks. <laughs> I wanted you to lose your breath. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a good one. They, they they would be able to do this uh, this year. Um, one of the things that they need to do is order the blocks, and it would be nice to get a green light on this today, and say you know we're good to go and. Um, we can move forward. They can start putting. I mean, are we all in agreement? Well, are we are we ready to make that move tonight? I'm comfortable. Yeah, I think if we have money, I'm good. Yeah, you know what? Because we we lost out last year. It got a little too cool. So you have to stress to them this mm-hmm. is like yeah. it has to happen this year. It can't happen October 30th. They really have to start scheduling this yeah. because yeah. we don't want to push this off to next spring. So yeah, we got the survey on last Thursday. We we got all this on there, and we gave this to them on Thursday. They had a price to us today, so that they they're they're on they're, top. Of they're that. on top of it. Okay, and they want to get it good. done. And um, well, I mean, it makes sense. You have them here now, right? Yep. And yeah, let's go. And it's um, they want to finish um, shed up there. 
and come down and just bang this out and you're ready for the winter. All right. Good. So, um, yeah. And then with the business there and, and the houses around there, you're going to have to coordinate. I don't know how long it'll take, but, you know, because um, sometimes people that, that live in the houses there park there too. Yes. So, so I mean, you, well, they probably park down at the municipal uh, lot here. Yeah, you, I was going to say, can't they park in yeah. the post office and just tell the police officers, you know, That's listen, all. they're going to be parking there overnight. It's, you know. Or even in front of Village Hall, there's room there. Right, in the front of Village Hall. That's so specifically for... It's, it's, it's in desperate need. There. There's no doubt about it. Yeah I, yeah, I think we're all in agreement. We need to get it done this year. So, um, And technically, we're supposed to vote on whatever, but the board is here. And so we, we're we in agreement to move forward. Okay. I'll pass that along. Thank okay. you. So what do we need to do? Make a, make a resolution at the next meeting? Or how do you yeah. want to do it? Yeah. Okay. But he's got the direction. I got yep. the direction, and contractor will have the direction. We got you, George. Yeah. So. Um, right. Rockledge Avenue, you're still up at bat. Mm -hmm. Look at you. So, yeah, so okay. there's been a complaint by the resident. We talked about it, um, I think, at the last meeting. Um, there was some settlement in the roadway by some pitch basins right um, west of De Rose, Scott, and uh, someone from our office met out there, even talked to the resident. They said, trucks go by, makes a bump noise. We hear it all the time. Can you do anything about it? And they came to the conclusion that, you know, a 30 foot wide swath from curb to curb kind of would fix that drop. Apparently that happened there for whatever reason. Yeah, there was some drainage or something done because it yeah. goes right across the street. I drove by the other it, day. And it, Wait, it, where is this on Rockwell? Um, so right uh, west of Day Rose, when you go into the end of the parking lot at Day Rose or at the end of the parking lot at Gallon Measure, it's right there where the pavement ends. For some reason, the catch basin in that one spot sunk and uh, around the manhole, around the catch basin. So Scotty fixed the catch basin on the one side and checked the one on the other side, and it seemed fine. So now we just got to tear out the pavement and redo it. So a section of it. So. Any price on that, or just, that's just going to be that, a mil, yeah. like a little bit of a mill and pave type thing? No, we a rough number on that is about seven hundred to take out the asphalt and about two thousand to right. the, the minimum. Thousand. Was that something from Count Ed? Do we know? Or? I I don't think it's so. It's got to be do. It's got to be a drainage issue. Yeah, it's it's right over the the catch basins, right over the pipe. Mm. Um, mm. Not sure where what's happening there. Because Count Ed was active in that area. Yeah, they did do some. They did do some gas main work over there, didn't they? Yeah, yeah further up though. So yeah. I don't know. Sometimes when you touch something, even if it's further away, it could reflect somewhere downstream. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, well, it's because they wander or yeah, because the water diverts to another area. Yeah, that that happens. So, but we don't. We, we can't prove that. That's the All problem. Right. So just fix it. So. Okay. And the other thing is I'm understanding that there's trucks at 6 a.m. that are going through there. So I don't know where those trucks are coming from. So Yeah, that's what uh, the report was today from Scott and uh, some other people. They said they're coming through there a lot and it keeps bumping and nothing noises. So. Yeah, what well, trucks could be going through there. I mean, that's a... Sometimes you've got landscapers and stuff yeah. too. And, yeah. it, and those trucks will go jingle jingle when you yeah. hit the bump there. While you're here, I wanted to ask you just one question. Striping. Are we going to be doing any striping on Westchester or Tate Avenue? Um, I think Tate might be okay. I think Westchester is one that has a little more of a problem. It's kind of faded. Uh, we can have um, Intercounty with their guy when they come to do all the other striping. They can do that. Well, we don't have to strike the parking lot, right, once it's done. Yep. So. Yeah, and there's, there's a, a lot of – there's like 1,700 linear feet of – of white striping in there, so there's mm -hmm. they're going to be that's you know something that they can their guy can do. Yeah, they have a striper that works for them. So oh, guy, right. well, we used to have uh, when the town called did those striping in the area, they came and did us. It was like, oh, they yeah, don't do that anymore? I don't know. I haven't. Uh, town of Parton goes back. The town yeah, of Parton, there's those that we come down Broadway and do all our work <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, I Bob's think, right. There's like an agreement that we had. Yeah, I think the coordination was the issue. Sometimes we do paving later or earlier, and it um, just didn't coordinate. So, well, uh, let's just try and do it the most cost-effective way. Yeah. That's all I ask. 
Yeah, I mean, usually, usually we do try to coordinate, but we should do it. With it Matt. It's the timing. You know, any people that work for the international? Is it international? You said we that we go. Uh, 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 county. Intercounty. County. County. Yeah. There was a guy, Matt. I spoke with all the time on that. Yeah. So he's probably talking tra uh, traffic. Traffic yeah. working in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think they they do the overnight for the town. Okay. So pretty much the, the only company. Yeah, they come right down the road and they hit all our, all our roads too. They said, meet with me and we'll show them what roads we want to get done. We got them done. I could ask Scott because Scott usually is on top of that. Yeah. I'll ask Scott uh, what the timing of the Portland's. Uh, yeah, but they've already paved and they've already, they've already yeah, striped. Yeah, they, they, that's the thing. Sometimes they do it early. Sometimes they do it later in our work. Well, sometimes the town doesn't let us know they're doing it. You just have to kind of see them and say, oh, yeah. by the way, remember us? Yeah, exactly. And, so, right. So. I'll, um, I'll reach out to Scott and find out if he's talked to him later. Okay. And one last question. We had a, and so we apologize for what happened the last couple of days. Um, we had them come in to do the crack ceiling and they started really early because there was a complaint at 10 to 7 this morning that they were out there blowing off the road okay. with the high pressure and it was it was quite noisy, and um, so Lindsay, this was on Lindsay Avenue today. So, my, my question is to you: When we hire these contractors, don't we have this uh, agreement that they get that says certain criteria, like when they start with the hours of operation? There should be time stipulations yeah. on the agreement. Yeah, yeah. because so this one, yeah, this one went through. Um, what is it? The um, state bid. So I'm not sure how that worked out but they and they they were supposed to come when marcus was here and uh, uh two months ago the guy's like oh i keep I'll, I'll get to you i'll get to you i'll get to you and then all of a sudden he says oh i'll be there and there's no real uh what do you call it like a pre-con meeting usually you have a pre-con meeting with contractors and you go over and you say hey when you're starting when you're doing this and it happened i think they said on friday they'll be out there and they showed up on Monday or something like that. So. Yeah, so that that can't yeah, we happen. Make that. We, we, we broke our we so. broke our own code, so <laughs> that cannot happen. That was and it was they were they were noisy. So all right, just in the future, any any contractors that come in here, and that's that's the same also in the village. So if you have a landscaper, they cannot start working before eight a.m. and on Sundays it's ten a.m. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks, George. Anything else for us? Any the, questions for George? I, I think the boiler is going to start soon. Good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it'll be good timing, right? <laughs> I think that was the only thing that I saw from Con Ed. They, they were doing some testing. I think it's going to go on uh, end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. So September 30th or September something. September 30th, yeah. right. So right. we'll have heat. Uh, so I think it's Go important. Hot water. Oh, wow. Heat and hot water. That's great. So, <laughs> we're into this this century. Good. All right, George. Thank you. I know things have been busy. It's been busy, busy, but yes. thank you. We're thank getting George. lots done. Yes. Good night, George. All right. Good, Good night. night. Thanks, George. Um, Stephanie, do you want to make a comment this evening or do you want to wait until next Tuesday's meeting about the pilot agreement? Um, no, we're ready to. I'll have a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign the pilot. At the next meeting. All right. And then yes, I also can't do an agreement. We're good. It's okay. great news. Yeah. All right. And then we could, we're going to go into a quick executive session after the meeting. So there's a few things, you know, we want to discuss yep. with the board. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have, uh, we're going to be scheduling on, on October 1st, uh, next Tuesday, a public hearing regarding Optimum. Um, the last agreement, I believe, was 15 years. Um, I have sent the board um, some confidential information that we're going to talk about for a few minutes. So we'll schedule the public hearing and uh, for the November the November meeting. So it's time for the renewal on that. And um, like I said, there's a few things I want to discuss in, in exec session with that. When's the renewal on it? What's the date? Uh, yeah. it's by the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. So it, just it, as long as we have it done by the this one. Yeah. 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 This one okay. was, a the, the last one was a 15 year. And I do have to ask what this one, do you know, Cindy? Well, we'll know by the public hearing. Yeah. I just want to know what the, are. what the drop date date is. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So, um, and the next is we're just moving right along here. The, um, a discussion regarding Senator Harkham's grant. 
So that has to be in the very beginning of October. And I'm not sure if it's October 1st. I'm not sure. Um, but we had um, some decisions that we had to make what we were doing with that money so that we could put the grant in. And I think, Cindy, if, if I'm not mistaken, the grant that we got from Dana Levenberg last year for the Albany Post Road, that's a DASNY grant. That's We still haven't received that money. Correct. So with these grants, you can put them in, but it doesn't mean you get them next month, unfortunately. Okay. So state is slow giving out money. So we're doing it. Oh, I think I think we could, now that I remember, I think we could put something down and then change it later. Right. Well, I, th mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought we were kind of like in agreement with like the pool. Wasn't that part of it? And also the pavilion, depending on the pavilion, yeah, but we don't have the number on that. It's right? going to be a little, oh, George left. It's going to be, oh, the, the paint, the, I'm sure we have money in contingency, but I think to paint the pavilion, it was over the 100,000, but I think we're like 120 or something like that. I remember exactly, but over 100, yeah. Yeah. But so I talked to Scott today because we were setting up for Buchanan Day and I had to give him, you know, some some thoughts on my on what to do with some things. But he said when he said that he could do the pavilion, he was just assuming the main the, the main, main frame, piece. but he wasn't assuming all the other stuff. So he said it's quite the project for them to do. So we can put it in. If the board agrees, you know, um, give direction to put it in for the um, for the painting. And if that becomes an issue, we can change it. But it's probably something that, you know, we need to do it to maintain those, the, the integrity of the structure. But just to reiterate. Scott's saying for, for the He's I went that to he do it. Think, yeah, he doesn't no, think. I thought that. we were going to get the gentleman, that, the, the contractor that did the stairway. We, yeah, we could get him too. Well, you know, there was a problem. We'll, we'll talk about that. But yes, um, it could be spray painted, but uh, we didn't get a price from him, I don't think, uh, for due to the pavilion. Okay. But I put that there in. There was a number thrown out. Uh, put the was, there? So. Yeah, was there? Yeah, there was a number thrown out. There was a, okay. it wasn't a concrete number, but it was. It was and a and, and that. that's why I, I wish Marcus were oh, here, right. but, it you know, really it was like a yeah, third of like what. It was good. And then we could use the money yeah. for other things too. Right. But I think the bulk of it, if at least half of it, has to be used for um, what the grant was put in for. Right, and, and that qualifies if I if I remember correctly. All right, so yeah, the direction or, is or or the pool. I mean, let's face it, the yeah. pool without the pool, we don't have a day yeah. camp. That's right. So we really have to weigh heavily on that because, I mean, families depend on that day camp. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is and, the that is and, the camp. And, and quite honestly, Jackie did a wonderful job this year. Kudos to her. And I think that camp is starting to rebound back to where it once was. And let's, you know, let's uh, those those are my two areas of focus. I don't know what I agree. Else I agree. Feels. So I, I think what we should do is next workshop, see if we can get some numbers for the pool, what needs to be done, because I know Marcus had gotten this company and I, I believe the name was Bell, their, their name was Bell, and they had come up with some figures to do that, but now that's what, maybe four years ago? So I'm sure those numbers are, was it? Yeah, so was it, just, I guess yeah that's right, Bob was involved, I forgot, yeah. It was Andrew Bell actually, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Bob was on the front lines of that. So we gave a lot of suggestions and things we need to do and how we have to deal with it. So right. there were significant numbers. I could think of a lot of ways to spend the money. Yeah. That's easy to spend the money. <laughs> but we do remember we also have two hundred thousand dollars in our around two hundred thousand dollars in our rec oh, funds. Yeah. yeah. So but I think we need to you're right, Dan. I think but, we need but to I'm look talking about, you know, when it's grant money like that, I can mm -hmm. think of a lot of things that we need yeah. that are right in front of us that we can really hone in on and make the best use of that money. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, because there was a list of what how we could spend it mm -hmm. um, on that. All right. So but you want to get the grant in by October first, which yes. is yeah. next week. Yes. So yes. put in for pavilion and then change it if we have to. Yeah. Yeah. We, the we'll last discussion we was we could change it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We did that. So if right. Grace, you can reiterate, I think we did that the last time around when we 
changed their course and said, let's use the, use the money to go right. towards the boiler because that was where the need was, right? right. right. So okay. let's just get it yeah, in. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Good. All right, good. That'll be great. All right. And then we um, they did the job here. They did the staircase. It looks wonderful. But we just always have to be careful when things are spray painted. Um, you just have to be careful where it's, you know, things are covered and where it's going to fly. But I, I think they did a really good job. And Dan, Dan uh, was the one that found this contractor. So thank you, Dan. I mean, he was extremely. It was reasonable. by happenstance. We can thank Pat Giuliano too. Oh, good. Pat was good. you know instrumental in recommending this you know, outfit. So. Good. And then Cindy's um, shower room there is uh, is going to be completely fixed, mm -hmm. so we can get rid of that plastic. So thank you, Dan. You found uh, you guys found a good contractor, so that we can get that resolved here. Anything to get things accomplished. It's, Amen. It's a good feeling when you can cross something off your to do list. Yep. And the to do list grows every day. Well. <laughs> and Peter. Um, Wanted to uh, be at this meeting to uh, mention something that he's seeing here in the village. I'm ready for you, Mr. Peter. Okay. Uh, several years ago, we were talking about amending the accessory apartment uh, code that we have and requirements. Um, and then with the governor uh, possibly putting in an accessory dwelling unit scenario where we had to let everyone have a rental something on the property. Uh, we left it as is. Um, there were two things in there that I really focused on that I wanted changed in that. Uh, now one of those items has actually come to light. Two of, the, two of the properties have sold in the village, and they have the ability to have a full accessory basement for their family and apartment. And in our code, unfortunately, it says you have to wait three years before you can apply. Um, we have allowed family transfer, like Cunningham's, when followed a son, you know, we continued. He came in for his own application, reapplied a different name. Uh, but we have two now with elderly parents, and one has cancer, and they bought the house thinking that they could do this. Uh, but, again, I understand it originally probably was in, put into inception to stop um, absentee landlords from buying up all our properties and making rentals everywhere. Right. Uh, but these are not the not inexpensive homes. They were very expensive, and one of them's in the courts, one of them courts, and one is on West Central Avenue. Um, <clears throat> so they were quite upset to find out that they couldn't just come in and apply. Uh, I found the process is they need to go to the zoning board first to get a variance for the three years part of the law, and they still have to have a public hearing. So that's two months, and then go to the planning board, and then have a public hearing. So they won't be able to get their relatives in there till January. You know, so I was a little. I, the three years I felt was a, is a bit much. Um, I don't see. I don't see a rampant run on accessory apartment applications. We've had two. There were thirty-two when I started, and I found there was only eighteen, and we added two more. So we have twenty in the past four years. That's all we have. And I just wanted to try to help help these families by amending that law and avoiding going to the zoning board because it, in the next one will be the same thing. There's a lot of the courts have basement capability for apartments, so it's going to keep. There's going to be more, you know, in the future for families buying the house because they're big and they want their relatives to be there. Um, and the other part of that was... Wait, can I just interrupt you? What's the section? Because I'll be doing this. Uh, this is 211.22 under occupancy. Okay. And Jeff, I have an extra. I don't know. If you need second, about I, I have it. I'm good. Couple, no, I don't have it, but I'm good. Age of structure, three years prior. It's a uh, C. Yeah, so, so if a new C. owner buys it, it's 211. three years before yeah. they before can... Before they can make an accessory C. form, C. correct? Yeah. yeah. 1122 C1? Yeah. 1122 okay. C1. I have a and, copy. And the thought is no years? They're just come Yeah, I, I, I don't see them. From three to zero? Yeah. So you want to eliminate, so you want to manage okay. where it eliminates that. I would like to eliminate yeah. that. But the That's, reason why we had in there previous is to try and get probably to show. stifle absentee landlords from yeah, absentee landlords. In expensive homes. homes. How do we do that? With, we can't. So, yeah, it's difficult because it kind it's of. It's difficult. Yeah. 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 But they don't really have I a think you're slope. seeing more and more people mm -hmm. taking care of their families, mm -hmm. and it it might not be you know a, a parent, but it could be another. These uh, these weren't for rental purposes. These were families. No, I get okay. it. I, I feel for them. I mean, yeah. I, I I think I, yeah. I mean it, three years is a little little much as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just a little concerned. Uh, yeah. The other the other section of that area of code is a requirement after they get approval from the planning board. 
and they pay for the application and their fees, and they come back in again in a year to apply to the board again to get reviewed to continue on. So they have to spend the money all over again in a year hmm. based on me. And I have to inspect it every year. So we did put it in the possibly of eliminating that because it's, it's on the building department to inspect it. And if there's an issue, I cannot rescind it, but I could bring it to the planning board and say but I've had Peter, issues and they would rescind it. I don't think we want to lose control of that. No, no. Because we are, and I'm not saying this about anybody no. that is an accessory apartment now, but we are seeing things mm -hmm. starting to be a little difficult here. There's certain situations where there's some houses that there are some issues, yeah. but we can't get in there unless they let us in. I know. So, you know, we want to, the, the good thing with the accessory apartment is there's some control with it. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I think it's commendable that these people want to take their parents in or their, their family members in and take care of them and set putting agree. them into a home or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's wonderful. And, you know, we, we support that. But I think we still need to keep some type of a control over it. Um, and I know what you're saying, like the year, whatever. But if, if things start to go south, we don't want to wait too many years. And well, I'm not actually, saying anything about the new people. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, you know, this is why the accessory law was so good, because there was a little control over absentee landlords and things getting out of control. Well, there's still control because I have to inspect it annually. It's a New York okay, State requirement. Yeah. Where's good. the fee, Peter? What is, what, do you have recommendations for this uh, going in another direction? Or what is the fee? I, I just wanted to eliminate the one-year reapplication to the to the planning board. Just so you're still going to do the, 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 oh, the on-site inspection? Every year is oh, a requirement. And I, yes. Just that one-year renewal, I mean, the one-year uh, review to go to, the to start over. They want to get reviewed. They want to make sure no neighbors were bothered. Or, so now you're going to have to keep the data on how when to do yes. the inspection, because they're not going to come in. Yeah. And tell no, you. I, I have been dealing that. with that since I started. I have to send letters out. and No, yeah, because they're not going to come in and tell you, okay, I have to get them out. They're supposed to. It's in the code, but I, I put it in the calendar. All right. Well, <laughs> as long as you can stay on top of that. And stay on top of it. Then... Okay. No. I, mean, I have no issue fine, with that. but that's how you're going to lose. Yeah. You're going to lose what's going on. A little on. bit of control. You're going to lose control. If you don't keep data mm -hmm. on that, you could yes. lose, you know. Your I understand. I just don't want to uh, have anybody doing anything they're not supposed to. But, again, that's why I would be monitoring that. And uh, my I can't rescind it, but I could recommend to the board that we've had issues and complaints and things, and mm -hmm. they could pull the permit. The board has to pull the permit. Like uh, Mr. Murray was uh, involved. That's uh, He made that clear. <laughs> To me, I do. I do like to, you know, the amendment for the, the three year wait seems a little drastic for me. Uh, as far as losing control, I, I, I'm, I'm with Teresa on that. Okay. Um, just getting rid of that. If, 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 if there's a way you can guarantee me that you're right. going to do the inspections every year, yep. You know what I mean? I understand. Because you may not be here forever. That's so, right. It may not be me. And, and, and here's the know, thing to go from right. a three year wait to no wait at all. I mean, that's, you know. Should, you can apply. It doesn't mean you're going to get it. <laughs> There's a lot of requirements in there. I don't mind that, getting rid of that. Okay. It's just that you, the inspection, like if you're not here forever, the next guy right. has to know how to follow And up. if he doesn't? If he doesn't. There's prior to check. Sat, you know, dormant yeah. for seven years. So that's, you know. It's, it's, I understand. it's, a, control, it's a control issue. Completely understand. Of, of Whatever the being able recommends. to keep this, you know, mm -hmm. a tight-knit bed, bedroom community. I'm fine with it. Um, whatever the board recommends, it was just an idea I was thinking about. And I appreciate it. It's it's good that you recognize that stuff. And it's, you know. Thanks for bringing that to us, definitely. Yes. But um, so you, you did give. I did you get did some give generic in information on what New York yeah, State has been pushing, pushed yeah. through. And I've already got nine. There's already nine Westchester, Westchester County municipalities that have went for it. You know, so, so. But I, our accessory apartment code is working for us yes. here in the building. We don't so. have to do it as well. We didn't <laughs> no. accept that. And I'll be, I'll be, I don't know, whatever the board recommends on that. What, the ADU program? Yeah, mean? it changes a lot. There's a, the basic parameters yeah. are in there. I get it. Yeah, but they're they're offering uh, monies now <laughs> to pay the residents uh, up to $150,000 per application to create uh, accessory dwelling on a residential property. So there was no money the year before or Good for two them. years. Now they're throwing money at it, <laughs> and everybody's in it. <laughs> everybody's jumping on now. I don't. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I'm, yeah, good for them. Good Cortland, they're in. They're on the list. Well, that's, that's great. Pro, yeah. Pro yeah. On the, I mean, I don't want that. To, I don't want good that to happen to us. Good for Cortland. Good. Thank you for that. 
I, I don't yeah. want to see that here. Well, you're going to see more of that next year. This year is an election year, so you're not going yep. to see too much. Until it's mandated, Peter. You don't have to. Well, I think we're all in agreement. Nope. That... Oh. I don't. I'm not. A, yes. It's you're negatory. Not. Good. Good, good. Right. Perfect. And Thank Peter, I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like you to stay because when we go into executive session, I'd like to okay. um, have a discussion with you about sure. something. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, like to see. Um, so uh, this Saturday is Buchanan Day. Um, there are going to be free T-shirts and it's going to have the Buchanan logo on it. And the back is going to say Buchanan Day. And Certainty was generous to donate those T-shirts. Um, the fire department is giving away smoke alarms. And also, I think it's around 12 o'clock, they will be doing a stove fire demonstration in the back. So that's where the fire truck is parked, and they will be doing that. And they will also be cooking the hamburgers and hot dogs, the police department ice cream. And we're having the alpacas back, so they're coming back. So um, please, um, so you know, there's a limited quantity on the T-shirts. There's a limited quantity on the smoke alarms. Bob was involved with uh, with the fire department getting uh, the, the smoke alarms um, and the alpacas. Secret. I had nothing to do with them. You had nothing to do with the alpacas? No. Oh, you're going to love them. They are yes. adorable. No, yeah. no. Yeah. I don't have to spit them, though, right? Yeah. Oh, I hope they don't spit. No, no. Uh, that's the camels. Camels. Camels yeah. spit yeah. like this, right? Yeah. No, I, my daughter wanted me to buy an alpaca. Oh. Should have. I know. Then we could have used your alpaca. Yeah. yeah, right. There you go. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I did spo uh, speak to Scoot today, like I said. Um, the cover for the salt shed is in. He said he'd be installing that next week. Did you know about, have you been talking to them about the salt shed, anybody? I know that he is, I yeah. They're putting I knew it they on. ordered it. No, and yeah. I know that they're, they're yeah, they, they said they were going to get it done. Yeah, so that should be next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, they were waiting to do a few things, build up the sides and everything. Uh, they, they do not, they cannot get to the paint this year of the garage, um, but that gives us some time that we can pick the color, the board can choose the color. Um, and when the crack sealer came in, I don't know how this happened, but uh, Scoot was out to lunch. When he came back, they were crack sealing the pavilion and that was not the direction. So when I was there today, the pavilion is crack sealed. Oh, good. Yeah, so thank you. If they're not charging us, thank you very much. Thank you for the mistake. Thank you. Um, and I, I just want to, I need to remind, uh, we need to follow up on this with the town of Cortland, with the agreement with the dogs, if we have any dogs that are uh, loose or with the police department is really good. I, I will say this, if they do find a loose dog, uh, you know, they put it out on, on Facebook, everybody, everybody gets involved in the community and puts it out on Facebook, dog missing and all this. But if we do need an agreement for a dog, um, you know, we were trying to work on getting an Right, we haven't heard anything. We haven't heard anything. All right. Okay. I don't think it's an issue, though, within the village. Do you? Yeah, but if it is an issue at 2 in the morning, like, you know, <laughs> you might get an angry dog. I was out at the circle the other day, and I had a dog bit me. Really? It was a it was a rescue dog. This woman had it on its her leash, and the dog lunged at me and grabbed grabbed my hand. Wow. So I said to her, you know, that dog really you shouldn't be walking that dog if you can't control it because I'm I have a big hand, so it didn't break my skin. But if it was a little kid, that would have been a problem. Right. So you never know, but at least it. we yeah. have we have something uh, yeah. somewhere for the police to go. Okay. There we go. Yeah, this is this this came up like. Yeah, a year yeah. ago. Yes, I know, but we never. We and, never and the town never got back to us. I remember it coming up too. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing I mean, it up because you know we didn't nothing. Yeah, that's all. I just wanted to bring that up again so we could move forward on that. Well, thank you for that because I do remember being brought up, and and I thought we were kind of buttoned up there. But if we're not, we we need to, you know. Yeah, we need to. Well, it's going to just happen that often when it does. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you, you need to take care of right. You have a, a point of a reference for someone to take care of that dog. Just have a protocol in play, right? You need a dog catcher. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. But okay, we'll we'll follow through on that. 
Um, the cell tower the firm that we hired, they are working with the cell tower people, but I just want to have a just quick discussion with the board. The original agreement was just to look over the agreement and work with Stephanie. I believe that's what the direction was because the agreement that we got is this whole thing. When the cell company came in, there is not many places to put a cell tower in the village. And of course, we want to make sure it goes on village property because there's revenue that we can get from that. And it's you don't want to put it near a lot of housing and things. So the site that was picked is really the optimal site because not only that, because I thought behind the, the garage, like, you know, in the field there where we dump all the leaves, I thought, well, that would be a good place to put it. Mm -hmm. But they said they need power to it. So so the options of where yes. to put this thing. They've got to get to a power source. Yeah. And they don't want to trench, you know. Yeah. And then if it's if it's too far, then it's like, what's the point of, of doing it? So so I just wanted to clarify that the direction yeah. was to review the application, the contract with Stephanie, because, you know, this is our first cell tower and probably our only and last cell tower. So I just wanted to Do make sure. Do have such a contract? Do we have anything I'm supposed to be reviewing? Yeah, there was something that, yeah, I'm sorry that you didn't get it. I, I think I got it. I get a better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you had a lot of emails. My, my okay. understanding was the reason why we hired the consultant we hired was because he was he was the best for what he offered. He offered more than what the other ones did. It was like oh, a one-stop shop. I didn't even know we had other choice because yeah, there's two other companies. I thought Marcus I did some legwork and said this this was the best option. All right. So it's it's not to do citing or anything like that. It's it's to go over to review the contract with Stephanie to make sure we're covered. So the consultant is just based on the lease agreement. He's just going to mm -hmm. review the lease agreement and not the work that's being performed. I believe that's what it was. Yeah. I, I believe that was the original direction. Do you remember? I believe nothing you're right on that. Oh yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm just yeah, I, whatever. What time we could discuss okay. it next Yeah. Right. All right, sure. What yes. Else? Um, I am sorry, I don't have this evening the uh, the flagpoles. I did order some, um, so I'll bring them next Tuesday so the board can see um, what direction they want to go for the, uh, the flagpoles, for the field of flags. Okay, Dan, what do you have for us this evening? Uh Oh, I, I didn't know we were going to trust these report, but that's that's fine. Um, oh, you don't have to. It's, no, you, the, don't um, have you and I attended the 9-11 yes. memorial uh, service down at uh, Broughton. It was mm -hmm. a wonderful event. If nobody's utilized that park down there, I highly suggest that you go down there and walk it and see where the memorial is. It's a great walk. Beautiful. You're right along the Hudson. Um, I did want to also uh, good news about the village of Buchanan being named in Westchester Magazine because of our property values going up, Good. sustaining value. So if anybody gets this magazine, I don't know, Kurt, you can hone in on it. But um, you know, we, you know, we should the get publication a that's uh, that goes out. I get this in my office, so that's why I I saw it. But, uh, Is that this month? Yeah, we should get a copy to leave either in the historical room or downstairs. Oh, that's I should, cool. I should have dog eared it before the meeting, but I was going to wait until the next meeting. But um, Wonderful. Good. there's an article in here, and it's basically sheds light on um, the property values in Westchester County and some of the best places to live for, you know, your. Um, well, we think this is the best place values. to live. So here, here's the little ver blurb on Buchanan, and we're under the safety category. One of two villages in the town of Cortland, tiny Buchanan, with a population of 2,000 plus, sits partially along the Hudson River, just south of Putnam County, characterized by woods, streams, and wetlands. It has a suburban rural vibe, a property crime incidence rate of 7.3, and a violent crime incidence rate of 6 per 1,000 residents annually. Fun fact, Buchanan is the smallest municipality in the world that formerly had a nuclear power plant and was decommissioned in 2021. But we are listed in this magazine as one of the best places to live in Westchester. Very good. So, Let me see. Yay. You you can't. That deserved a round. Beautiful. Westchester Magazine. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Can you hold that up again? Yep. 
in the world. In the world. Yeah, we were the large, smallest community in the world. Oh, so, Westchester we Magazine, probably. just a nice little blurb yeah, mentioning yeah. our village. Thank you, Dan. That's great. That's it. That's all I have, Thank I you. think. Anthony, <laughs> what do you have for us? Uh, nothing. I'm honored to live in this village. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yes. Yeah, it's great. You made the magazine. That's why I didn't go too far, you know? No, great. Uh, I, I don't have much to say. Um, thank you for uh, um, for George's feedback. And, and I am excited about that parking lot over there. I think it's it's a necessity, and I hope yeah. you we get it done, and it looks the drawings here look great. I, I think everybody will be pleased with the outcome. And um, that's all. I look forward to seeing everybody on Saturday at their our family day. And maybe we should have a grand opening for that parking lot. That's hey. I agree. <laughs> maybe it'll be done in time for the Christmas tree line. You know? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good combo with that. That sounds. Yes. Yes. I'll drink champagne. Probably. I don't really have much except to follow up on what uh, Anthony's talking about. We've seen the parking lot get done, seen the drainage problem be- on uh, Wake Street and Tate Avenue backyards that are getting done. A lot of things that have been, you know, a long time coming. So a lot of things are getting done here. So I'm happy about that. Right. Thanks, Bob. But Wilda, what do you have for us? So I spent a few days in Saratoga last week. Good. And I attended the NICOM, as you have suggested. During the time that I campaigned, I am very grateful that I had the opportunity to go. I had a lot of conversations with other trustees and mayors, and I can say that I've learned a lot. And if any of my colleagues at the table would like some of the information that I received, I'll be more than happy to share it. Great job, Walla. Yep. Those are always good meetings. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of information. Absolutely. And I think I think we learn more from the other uh, municipalities talking to other people, what issues they're dealing with and, you know, what things they're working on. Good. Very good. That was valuable. Yep. Okay. Comments from the floor. <laughs> Lisa Lenz. Hi. Anthony. Yes. Or Trustee Cat Patty. Um, you had mentioned last meeting about reading the newspaper about the 55 plus mm-hmm. change with AMS mm-hmm. and to inform ourselves. I read it and I really don't understand. Um, could you share what you think are the big changes that would be? Well, I I noticed in the in the article how they were doing the the same in mm-hmm. Yorktown, and that was the article it was about about how they proposed the board in Yorktown was going to look to accept, I guess, what was going to be their change as well. Mm-hmm. Initially, I don't think it was a fifty five and older like it was here, right? And um, I think most of it was was the impacts of the local area, the school, and the um, um, the usage of other facilities. Uh, the article didn't really go into depth. It just, it was just for me to notice that there, it is like what we're going through, they're going through it as well. And that was what I noticed about it. And just to see that it wasn't, so their investor, whoever their investor is, is not just focusing on our project per se, is focusing on all of their projects because it seems to be the most impactful investment for them. And I just wanted everybody to, to see what I saw. Okay. Not that it was to, to tell you that it was good, bad, or ugly. Okay. Just that it was what they were doing and, and the data that they have locally and from statewide, I guess, that this was the best way to invest their money. That's what I got out of it. There was one comment that they had to change the zoning to a senior zoning. Is that something that's going to have to happen? I don't think we have that. No. Okay. No. Yeah. No. Okay. No. And then I was wanted to ask about the recreation committee. Is that is anything coming forth from that? Um, you want me to answer? Yeah, a will does the okay. uh, the liaison. We were both at the meeting last week, but um, so the committee has, and we asked the mayor to define the purpose of the committee because we were kind of stuck if we were supposed to bring projects to the forefront Mm -hmm. and run them or if we are an advisement committee. And so we were told that we are there to advise. A survey has gone out to understand what the needs of the residents are. Mm -hmm. We only got 17 responses. So what we're going to do is there'll be a table during Buchanan Day 
and we'll have surveys there, paper surveys, so that the residents can fill them out. Once we get all the surveys in, um, and I think you put it on Facebook. I think so. Yeah, it went on Facebook. The newsletter. So we're trying to, yeah, the newsletter was, the link is in the newsletter. (laughs) The link is in the newsletter. It went on Facebook. We'll have paper copies. We're going to push to get as many responses as we can. We will analyze the information and then we'll share them. And I really agree the pool needs sprucing up. Sprucing up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree. Is there any discussion of maybe turning the the kiddie pool, which is non-functional, like into a spray pad? There has been plenty of discussions about that. I think it was mentioned at the last meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that was discussed when I was working still. I met with Andrew Bell, and they discussed that. That's one of the things they brought up. And back then, they were saying the cheapest spray pad you're going to look at is about $200,000. Well, we have that. Yeah, mm-hmm. which would then yeah. kind of uh, snowball into other things that have to happen. Because once you get involved doing certain things, the county is going to get involved and make you start upgrading and doing other things. Yeah, because they have concerns, right? Well, it has to probably have to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? I'm sorry, Lisa. What? I said, are those upgrades that have to happen to the pool anyway, or no? Well, the other upgrades I'm talking about are ones that we don't have to do now because we're, I don't know if the word grandfather's right, but we don't have to fix them because we're operating the way we are. But once you start doing certain repairs to a pool, you must start keeping up to the times, basically. I think we should research it and look into yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's priority. I agree with you. I think the pool I is... is the a, pool and the playground are uh, I mean, yes. you talk about 30 years on the parking lot I'm sure that playground has got to be I know when I started bringing my grandson 12 years ago to it it was old then so and the pickleball courts <laughs> no the pool definitely needs a picture of the pickleball court Net, yeah. in Ossining well, yeah. it's not a court but it's in their recreation department Oh. And if you ever go down to the riverfront of Austin, they have that spray park is like unbelievable. They have a sp- indoor spray park too. Oh, really? I didn't I know about to, the indoor I one, but the outdoor one is big. Water, I go to water classes there. Mm. Is that all for yeah. village residents or Austin residents? It's open. I go to like with senior swim yeah. time, and I just have to pay a small amount more than the village residents. Well, let's make it more attractive, and they'll come. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that the so pools the workshop. Are... Let's see if we can get some information. You know, get that get yeah. that going because before you know it, it's the spring and the pools Maybe, opening again. Yeah, I you just know? feel like yeah, this recreation committee was started a year and a half ago, and we're just getting to the surveys now. Well, you know what they they had the surveys formed, and then we had a. It was a difficult time getting the survey monkey and, and getting that moving. But this this is a good group. They're they're worker bees and they they're doers. So, you know, um, and then they'll they'll we'll have them come report back to the board um, with their findings. I can guarantee you that the results will be in very very soon. Well, I think the good thing is that you guys are taking a proactive approach in the fact that people weren't responding to the link, mm-hmm. and they have the paper copies at Buchanan Day. So anybody that's at Buchanan Day. Please go over to the table where they're going to have the the, mm-hmm. the the survey and just fill it out because it's it's very quick. It's yeah, very and quick. it's it, it's, it's critical survey. for us to be able to decide where we want to focus. Mm-hmm. You know our efforts. So, sure. okay. Cool. And Lisa, you can join us if you want. Cool. I never know when the meetings are. I'll talk to you after this okay. meeting. All right. Any other comments from the floor? I want to jump on Lisa's bandwagon on 55 and up. If you remember, Tina Zarello said 55 and up means one person out of that has to be 55. So you guys, a lot of guys, let me say a lot of gentlemen like to marry younger women. So if the gentleman is 55, the woman could be 45. That's a very nice way of putting it. She had her four children between 35 and 45. And so you could still see, um, you know, an increase in the school system. And I don't know, Stephanie, can you designate 55 only and up? 
you have to leave it open for one to be 55? As far as I know, I mean, I've never really researched it. But one person, when you do a 55 or a 62, one person has to be that age. Does it, does it have to be the owner's that they? It's not like a 35-year-old's buying it. It has to be someone. Well, yeah, but it's not the owner. I know. It's, it's, it's a rental. Rent. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's going to be managed by a professional management company. And that's a know. pretty steep rental to be paying oh, with I, that situation. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out who from Larchmont and Bronxville and New Rochelle and Irvington and Edgemont and Hastings is coming up to Buchanan. Maybe that article is a good way of marketing um, mm -hmm. those apartments. But mm -hmm. if they're looking for any kind of activity uh, as compared to what they could have down there, you know, what they're leaving, that's something else to be, you know. I'm waiting for the third trend to come in, like I said. Mm -hmm. That's the next one. All right. I just want to make uh, you aware uh, Sharon received... Uh, a 72-page overview of the model uh, battery energy storage system law. We just need one copy. <clears throat> I believe Sharon will forward that to everybody. 72 pages. Let me. I'll pass this around. This was uh, oh, September geez. 17th. It was informative. Uh, there are things that you should uh, make the developer do and not be paying for. So little things like that. It's a PowerPoint. Uh, the one thing that was brought up about that was the Warwick fire. Mm -hmm. And Camille Warner did not answer the question of, and, he, and Adam Carson gave her the out. She said, I don't know if you want to answer this, if you can answer it, whatever. And she declined. She wanted to, but she declined in the end. Um, there is one part of that that she's going back to her group uh, regarding variances that a battery storage place might need, and that was not even in their thought process. So she is going to come back to that because you'd have to go before the boards and, you know, whatever. If you guys are doing the uh, the site plan or, you know, taking over for the planning board or the zoning board or whatever, um, you know, that is something that you you will need to know. Um, it was informative. Um, Teresa, I marked Linda Whitehead is the one yes. for the Westchester um, mm -hmm. Federation, uh, Municipal Federation, Planning Federation. Uh, if you can do anything to get Zoom meetings on that for um, residents, I still feel they work better. You know, people will attend those. Uh, we had a big attendance on that Rockland one. I don't know how many people from here attended, but I got King and Outhouse to go on. Um, he contacted Adam. They give us a, a credit, a certificate uh, for the hours. Rockland, they automatically know who's on the planning and zoning boards. They clock that and they keep records of the Federation keeps the record. Uh, for the municipality. So, you know, that's something Westchester does not. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's done through clocking on to Zoom. Um, and they can also see when you leave. So you may not get credit, but, um, you know, they do do that. Um, so that was it. Um, it was good. Yes. You know, brow, you know, peruse that PDF. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't, I just I couldn't make myself copy. 72 pages. <laughs> so, but that's yeah, it. Thank you. Uh, th th thank you for going, Eileen, because it, um, anytime useful information can come back, it's. Um... <laughs> you guys read the examiner. You saw the article of Mount Kisco, fire chief, ill equipped for battery storage, if not not equipped at all. So I would like our fire department to make a statement about that, either in conjunction with Montrose and Verplank, so that we have an idea if this ever gets pushed on us by the state, because they are pushing. The tier one is for 80, uh, 80, mil, 80 watts, which would be household. 
And then the next tier goes up and that goes into um, a little bit more. Water works to co- to cool down the cells in the container that goes in the big box. But water is not the idea so no, to no. Yep. put out a fire. No. So, but water will cool down the cells that are inside. And once that one cell gets hot, then they start to expand out to the whole That's group. like almost a chain reaction. After yeah. That. So, but that's supposed to be monitored 24 hours a day. So I don't know if Warwick was human error or if it was actual battery use error. Um, mm-hmm. you know, well, even so- just EVs alone. I mean, look at the, look at the accident that happened last week down in Yonkers where the, 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 the Tesla went yeah. through the, the building. Okay. Right. I know. Yeah. Um, so, but I think that's something that our fire department and conjunction fire departments, yep. you know, the, the surrounding ones need to be able to tell us mm-hmm. so that if, you know, there was a, a car fire in a garage in a house or, you know, whether it be underground in the um, the apartments up on Bannon Avenue, you know, you just never know where any of this is going to be. Yeah. And what the firefighters are being exposed to. Right. Yeah. So, okay, that's another whole issue. Yeah, but that was in the examiner. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you, you. Eileen. Thank yeah, you. there's a lot of good information when the planning and the zoning board go to these different, you know, they have to get so many credits a year for going for training. And, you know, that's one of the courses Eileen took, which is, you know, it's good. It's, we, we need that information. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to Stephanie. You don't have anything for us, or or Cindy, before I go into. Okay, I'd like to make a motion go to executive session to talk about uh, negotiations and personnel. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks for coming, and have a great Buchanan Day. And don't forget Buchanan Day. <laughs> <laughs>